Hi, today we're going to discuss series and parallel circuits, and to do so, we're using a water analogy. We use a water analogy because we can see water, and it's very hard to see electrons and how electrons flow through a circuit. Now let's go in the lab and explore how we made this analogy come to life. Here we are designing resistors that will be used in this demonstration. This laser cutter is cutting out water resistors from a plastic sheet. The resistors have four small holes, and they restrict the flow of water. Here we are adding a resistor to the tube that slows down the flow of water. Here we are building our water circuit. We'll use these two liter bottles to show how the water level changes as a result of resistors in the tubes. This is the first circuit we are going to explore. It's pretty simple. We have two resistors in series and we're going to look at how the water level changes across the resistors. Now we're going to simulate this circuit using water instead of electricity. We put a two liter bottle at each of the black dots of the circuit to visualize the change in water level. The voltage in this diagram is related to the total water height in the two liter bottles of our water circuit. So here's the first resistor placed in the left tube, and here's the second resistor placed in the right tube. And now we're going to fill up this two liter bottle on the right. In the water analogy, it represents our voltage source. By filling it up with water, we're putting pressure in the line, and this pressure causes water current to flow through the tube, across the resistor, and into the middle two liter bottle. There must be a pressure difference across the resistor in order for current to flow. For current to flow through the left resistor, a pressure difference must build up, so water fills the middle two liter bottle. The water level of the middle bottle stabilizes when the flow of water coming into the bottle from the right resistor equals the flow of water leaving the bottle from the left resistor. Now let's mark this water level so that we can later compare it to different resistor arrangements. The flow of electric charge is called electric current because it brings to mind the flow of water, which is also called current, and which we are also very familiar with. The voltage V is a measure of the pressure provided to the electrons so that they can move. In water, if you have two containers at the same level and you connect them with a tube, no current flows between them as there's no pressure difference. The voltage is zero. But if you have two containers at different levels and connect them with a tube, there's a pressure difference between them. And current flows from higher pressure to lower pressure. The resistor R can be thought of as obstacles to current flow, such as boulders in a river current. Two liter bottles were positioned at the locations of the three black dots. The total current flowing through the circuit is given by I total, which equals the voltage V divided by the equivalent resistance. The equivalent resistance, REQ, for the series resistors add together. So REQ equals R plus R, which equals 2R. I total can be written as V divided by 2R then. We can now solve for V middle, which equals I total times R. Since we just solved for I total, we can plug that into the equation, and we get V middle equals V divided by 2R times R, which equals V over 2. This means that we'd expect the water height at the middle of the circuit to equal half of the total water height of the pressure source on the right. From the experiment, we find a very similar result. For the second circuit, we have a parallel component and a series component. The parallel part is on the right where there are two tubes, each with a single resistor, connected in parallel. And on the left, we have a single tube with a single resistor, just as before. And it is in series with the parallel circuit on the right. So here's a little derivation for the equivalent resistance for resistors in parallel that might help you remember the formula. So here I'm drawing two resistors in parallel, R1 and R2. The current going through resistor R1 is I1 and the current going through resistor R2 is I2. And there's a voltage across the resistors V, and the total current through the circuit is I total, which equals I1 plus I2. But each resistor only sees the voltage source. It doesn't know that the other resistor is there. So we can just draw each resistor separately, which gives I1 equals V over R1, and I2 equals V over R2. As said before, I total equals I1 plus I2, we can write I total as the voltage V divided by some equivalent resistor, REQ. So if we write it out like this, we can see that we can easily derive the formula for equivalent resistor by substituting the expressions for I1 and I2 from the equations at the top right. We see that 1 over REQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. 
So as we fill the right bottle up with water, once again we're providing a pressure difference that causes water current to flow. The middle 2 liter bottle begins to fill with water, but will the water fill to a level that is higher or lower than the previous circuit? Let's see. Here we solve circuit 2. The three white dots represent the 2 liter bottles in our water circuit. We want to solve for V middle, which will tell us the water height of the middle 2 liter bottle compared to the full 2 liter bottle on the right, which acts as our water pressure source. We'll first reduce the parallel component of the circuit to an equivalent resistor. From before, we know that the formula for these two resistors in parallel is 1 over R equivalent equals 1 over R plus 1 over R, which equals 2 over R. That gives REQ equals R over 2. Now we redraw the circuit and we replace the parallel component with the equivalent resistor we just calculated. Once we make this substitution, it's a simple circuit to solve, similar to circuit 1. REQ for this circuit is R plus R over 2 equals 3 halves times R. I total equals V over REQ, which equals V divided by 3 halves times R. And this gives V middle equals I total times R. And we substitute in for I total and get that that equals V divided by 3 halves times R times R, which equals 2 thirds times V. Therefore, we expect the water level of the middle 2 liter bottle to be approximately two-thirds the height of the bottle on the right. Let's see what happens. We see that the water level of the middle bottle has risen to a level that is higher than the level of circuit 1. We mark it with a P to indicate that this is the water level for the parallel circuit. And here's the third circuit we are going to look at. In this case, we place two resistors in series in the right tube. These resistors are also in series with a resistor in the left tube. So there's the resistor on the left tube, and here are the two resistors placed in series in the right tube. We're filling up the right bottle with water to create a pressure difference to cause water current to flow. How high will the water fill the middle bottle? Will it be higher or lower than circuit 1 and circuit 2? Let's see. The diagram for circuit 3 is shown, and it is similar to circuit 1. We solve for I total equals V divided by some equivalent resistor, which equals V divided by 3 times R. Remember, resistors add in series. So REQ equals R plus R plus R, which equals 3R. V middle equals I total times R, and we plug in V divided by 3 times R for I total, which we just calculated. This gives that V middle should equal V divided by 3, or the height of the water in the middle 2 liter bottle should be about one third the height of the bottle on the right. We see that the water level of the middle bottle has risen to a level much lower than the circuit 1 and 2. We mark the level with an S to indicate that this is the series combination circuit. We hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thanks.